Hi there, I hope you're doing well today. My name is Chantal and today I'm planning to enter my very first art competition. I painted this in my second art vlog and I really love how it turned out. There was no sketch, I just went in rogue and I really love it. I did a few more after that which I'll show you in a moment and then I created this one which was a bit of a game changer. I get so confused with this fat book because I don't know what the front is. I painted this and I really love it. It took about 30 minutes. I'll leave the video here if you're interested. I absolutely love it. There was no sketch, I just kind of went straight in and I just, I'm so happy with how this one turned out. I would like to create a face that looks similar to this one because I feel like this is quite close to my art style. I, I want to work with it because I feel like we're getting somewhere. But it's not going to be a floating face, it's going to have an actual chin and a head, so I need to work out how I'm going to put this floating face on a person. You might not be able to see, but I've done eight sketches here, they are just quick sketches, they're not like exactly the same. And I thought we could just try a load of different colour palettes, try and figure out which one is the favourite, and then get sketching the original for the competition. Let's go. I've got this Pantone Colour Harmony book and I thought we could look for it to try and get some ideas. It's got like all these really interesting colour palettes in. These are quite nice and muted. Maybe we could do one that's a little bit more like um, neutral colours. Oh, they've got quite a lot actually. I could do a darker theme. That might be quite cool. I like this one actually, like a really dark green blue with uh, dark red maybe. I do like the vibrant colours, I think we might have to do one like that. I don't have any neons. Obviously it can't be neon anyway because it's an original, so it needs to be light fast. Maybe we could do a blue as well. I often put blue with pink just because I like that. Oh, these are nice. Something like, um, like ultramarine with cobalt teal maybe. We could do a full primary, maybe like a yellow blue red, that'd be cool. Oh, these are interesting, these are just two colours, that might be a little bit more ideal. Oh, I like these. Maybe, oh, we could do black and yellow. That would be cool. Like a B. The yellow-pink is a really lovely combination. Okay, I think that's given us some really good ideas. Let's move on to the thumbnails. I'm trying to have a plan, but I'm not really a plan kind of gal. Ultramarine and cobalt teal. Then I'm thinking like the yellow-pink, yellow-purple combination. I really like that. I would like to do one that's all pinks just because I really like pink. That's my favourite colour to paint with. I like the idea of doing a primary colour one, I think that would be really cool, maybe bold. Neutral, we'll go for a neutral one, something like brown and purple maybe, brown and green. We'll try and do a light one that's kind of pastel. Sounds like a plan. Something that I hadn't considered, which was probably a little bit silly of me, is, um, uh, should I prop it up? It's just so, I don't know, it's so wonky. I feel like it's going to go everywhere, but I need to find something that is the exact height so that it can be completely straight. Yeah, that doesn't play. Ooh, all right, two PlayStation games. Am I really going to have to do this every single time I paint in this sketchbook unless I only use this side? It works. I'm sorry it doesn't look as pretty, but Skyrim doing its bit. Skyrim's a great game, let me just say that. Okay, that's the first one done. I think it's definitely a warm-up piece, but hopefully it'll get a bit more comfortable as we go along. I just remembered the B idea. You know, that kind of black and yellow one? I want to try that. I totally forgot. Until recently, I didn't realise just how much of a comfort zone I had when it came to creating art. 
I think the Pantone colour book has really shown that even this one here, which is literally just complementary colours, it's a purple and yellow colour palette. I love it, I do really like this one. And it makes me wonder why I don't use complementary colours. I don't experiment with very much at all. A lot of the time I choose analogous colours because, I don't know, they're very complementary, they don't contrast in the slightest, and I feel like it provides a nice soft kind of painting. A lot of my paintings are quite delicate, quite soft, they don't have contrast, bright, bold, clashing colours. So I think this was a really fun experiment, doing loads of different thumbnails in colours I wouldn't normally choose. I love the complimentary one, I want to do more like that. And honestly, I love this primary portrait. It's bright yellow, bright red, bright blue. It has a lot of contrast. It might not be very nice to look at, very appealing, but I love how bold the entire piece is. And honestly, I was thinking about doing this one. I really was because it's so different to anything I've done before. I kind of do just want to give it a go, maybe in this sketchbook. Naturally try and create this portrait because I love the primary colours and the way that they clash and <laughs> merge together. Green, I'm not feeling green. I try to use green in my pieces but I think especially when it comes to portraits, I just don't think green really works. I don't like green. I think this portrait is kind of giving Shrek. I'm not a fan. I do now have the Daniel Smith Cascade green shade though, and I will say that is a gorgeous green. Any greens that are blue leaning, turquoise, teal. I'd say Hooker's green is very blue leaning as well. I just don't like any greens that are solid greens or very yellow. And especially this colour palette here, I think that's very yellow, very light green, kind of brown. It's not my vibe at all. So that's a no to the green. I'm not gonna lie, I did have higher hopes for this pastel skin tone one. It's Naples Yellow, Naples Yellow Red, Shell Pink, and Cerulean I think. There's a lot of white, the colours are very opaque, and there wouldn't be much layering possibility. And I think that's partly why this one looks kind of flat, or it would definitely look flat if you tried to do more layers. However, I think if the Cerulean was changed for a different kind of blue, the problem with that shade is it can look very chalky quite easily, especially for portraits. I don't think I've ever done a portrait before that's used Cerulean. I tend to go for Ultramarine, but that has a lot of granulation so I've been leaning a little bit more to indigo lately. Cerulean is chalky and opaque and I feel like it doesn't really work for portraits in my experience. Moving on to the pink themed portrait which I knew I was gonna love. It's literally pink, it's analogous, it's exactly what I do and it's so similar to the first page in this sketchbook. I love how soft the colours are and it is lacking contrast compared to the others but I think it works. It just looks cute and airy and soft. It has a very delicate feel so I think this one really works. Moving on to another skin tone idea. I've never actually done a face in this style before using actual skin tones. I tend to go for really bold colours rather than browns. But this one kind of surprised me, I think it's quite cute. Though I think the shadows are a lot darker than they should have been, I think I should have stopped sooner. Honestly though, I think this might be something to consider in future. I'm not sure exactly how it would work because my style kind of extends over the entire page and the paint splatters go everywhere so I'm not really sure how that would work if I did everything as a actual skin tone because obviously kind of like the face ends and then it goes into the background so I'd have to really figure that out. But honestly I think that could be really fun, especially if I sort of did it a bit more like the primary one where it kind of looks like a regular skin tone but the colours are a little bit more extreme. Maybe it could be something that we could merge the earlier one with this one. That could be something that could work. And the final idea is the wild card. I did not have high hopes for this one, but I'm not gonna lie, there was a part of me that thought it could actually work. Somehow we could pull it all together, it could be the wild card, but no, that didn't happen, that didn't happen here. I was kind of hoping it would give B, but it doesn't really give anything. 
maybe a high-vis jacket. Maybe that's the kind of vibe it's giving off, but it's definitely not giving off cute B. I I think the shadows are a bit too dark and it just didn't work. There's, I, I don't know how I can explain why it didn't work because it really just did not work at all. Still, I think this was a really fun experience, being able to try lots of different things. And I need to do thumbnails like this more often. I really do. It's kind of like a last minute thing that I don't really do very often, but I love how this has turned out. Okay, let's quickly go through them. I think the black and yellow I thought would be a bit of a wild card and it's not like at all. The blue is quite nice. I do quite like the three primary colours. It's a bit spooky. That one's kind of nice. I don't think that one worked. I quite like this one. The skin tone just doesn't look too bad. That one's a big knife. I think the pink one is my favourite. Probably just pink or three colours. Maybe we'll go simple. We'll just do pink. To be completely honest, when I go into a painting, most of the time I don't do a warm up. I decided to do one this day just because I knew that the style of painting was going to be quite quick. The technique is just a very quick technique. It was going to be one or two layers and nothing more than that. Plus I had a page in the sketchbook that actually had a portrait drawn and I knew I needed to do something with it. So I just decided to hop on TikTok Live and treat it as a warm up. Although honestly, it didn't go well and it probably put me in a worse off spot before starting this painting. The paper was different, so I didn't really learn anything from it. It reacted differently. It wasn't watercolour paper, it wasn't 100% cotton. And to be honest, even the thumbnails that I did reacted differently as well, because it's cardi paper as opposed to arches. They are very different. Even though they're both 100% cotton, and I do love them both, they are very different from each other. So going into this painting, I wasn't super confident just because the warm-up didn't go to plan, but I think I felt a little bit more comfortable holding the paintbrush and getting on with it because I'd already done the warm-up. I only used three shades of pink for this piece. Honestly, I feel like a lot of the time a limited colour palette is the best thing to do, especially because the entire piece is pretty much just pink and white and the white being what shows through the paper. I wanted it to be harmonious. One thing I had noticed about this painting is it actually ended up looking a lot more like me than I'd intended. I used myself as a reference because I could put myself kind of where I wanted to. I wanted half the face to be in shadow and I don't think that really came across in the painting, maybe a little bit, but it definitely doesn't look as harsh as the reference. By taking your own photos as a reference you can put yourself exactly where you want for the painting, but honestly I think I followed it a little bit too much, it actually ended up looking like me. It wasn't supposed to be a self portrait, but it does kind of look like me loosely. And I actually ended up using this. I now offer loose portraits like this on Etsy and because it looked so much like me I was actually able to use the photo that I took as a reference alongside this photo to be able to show people like if you submit a photo like this I can create a painting that loosely looks like it like this. So if you want to see the reference photo I used, it is on Etsy. It's kind of an odd way of painting this style, this technique, because it's kind of wet on wet and wet on dry in one. I don't actually wet the paper first with water, but the brush is mostly full of water with only a tiny bit of paint at the very beginning. So I add a very light layer of paint, like very light, mostly water in certain areas in the shadows. And then I drop the more pigmented load of paint onto those wet on dry patches. So it's like a weird combination of both. I do have a lot of experience with both wet on wet and wet on dry, but this is definitely an odd combo. Treating it like wet on dry but then treating it like wet on wet afterwards is not something that I'm used to. But honestly it's a really fun way of creating and there's a lot more control. Sometimes when you drop paint into water you have no clue what it's going to do. And at least this way you know the amount of water you've got down, it doesn't cover the entire page. So it can't spread as far. The archer's paper isn't very good at lifting. There was one thing that I had to really keep in mind. Because especially with this method, once you've added paint, you can't really pick it up. Especially if you want it to have blooms and have different effects and you want it to look like the paint is actually spread, it can quickly become out of control. 
And I think I lost a lot more highlight than I would have liked. I would have liked to have kept more highlight, but the paint just kept spreading and spreading and there's only so much you can do. This paper doesn't lift very well and it also doesn't really create water balloons very well. So it's not easy for me to make areas lighter. Saying that, in the end I decided to stick with just the one layer. I had intended to add a second layer, like this entire time, but the blooms that were created were just so pretty that I didn't want to go over them and then lose them. You might have seen that I did that before in episode 5 of the scene series where we painted the horror film The Omen. I will leave it down below. That was a really good one, but I painted the background a lot lighter, created some really lovely blooms, and then I kind of had to cover them to get the values correct. But I ended up leaving a lot of the blooms there because they were so pretty. That's kind of what happened in this time. I like the blooms, I like what we've created, and I just didn't want to go over it and lose it because once you've lost it you can't really get it back. In a lot of ways watercolour is a very unforgiving medium. I like it in the sense that it's not very messy, it's not very wasteful, you can reuse everything and it does feel a lot cheaper than other mediums because you can re-wet the paint that you've got. I find acrylic quite wasteful sometimes and I don't like that you have to mix a brand new colour all over again and then you have to use it up before it dries. I know about Stay Wet palettes, but I really don't use acrylic enough for that to be valuable. Honestly, it would just go mouldy before I come back to it. So that's why I tend to stick with watercolour. But especially on this Archer's paper, it's not very forgiving at all. I love the blooms, and if I was going to recreate it again, I don't think I would be able to do that. This was done in one layer. It took about 30-40 minutes. And honestly, I don't think it would be possible for me to recreate anything to this exact level because so much of it really just depended on how the water and how the paint wanted to react in that moment. And that's what I love so much about this piece. It looks like that. It looks like it was created quickly and the paint and the water just did whatever they wanted. And that's kind of what happened. I worked with it and I adapted on the spot. But most of it was out of my control. I was just watching what the paint did and how I react to it. Still, I really love this painting. I love the way that it stand out. This footage is actually from last year. I think it got long listed, but it didn't get short listed. So I got through maybe the first and second stage, but it didn't get any further than that. And that's okay, I know that. There were some really good entries and there were a lot of oil paintings and typically watercolour just doesn't do very well in competitions like this. But I'm still really happy with this painting, considering I created it in less than an hour. Honestly, it's my favourite painting of 2023 and that's why I wanted to show you. It's a little bit late that we've finally come to edit this, but I still hope you've enjoyed this one. Sorry it's taken so long to put together an edit. I know that I've shown you this painting quite a few times, so it's nice that I finally got the process to go with it. This original is actually up on Etsy if anyone would like to give it a new home. And if you'd like a commission in this kind of style, I could also do that for you. I've got commission slots open on Etsy. I hope you've enjoyed seeing me create it, seeing the process. The somewhat funny part is that the thumbnailing and the planning actually took a lot longer than the painting, but you know how these things work. Thank you for being here, I really appreciate it. We've just passed 3,500 subscribers here on YouTube, which is amazing. Thank you so much for being here, thank you for your support. Let me know down below what you think of this painting and if you would create anything like this. What colour of the thumbnails would you have chosen? Would you have chosen the pink, the blue, or would you have gone for a slightly crazy combo? I honestly still love the primary one. I kind of still want to do that. But yeah, let me know which one you would have chosen. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Relax, drink some water, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.